Welcome to Daily Brief YouTube channel. The conflicts in Ukraine continue to escalate very violently. As a result of the Ukrainian armed forces response to the advance of the Russian army, major conflicts have arisen in the region. The second day of the clashes proceeds differently from the first day. While the Russian army destroyed some of the air defense systems in the region with intense air attacks on the first day, it started a ground operation on the second day. As the Russian army was advancing towards Kiev by land, as a result of the heavy bombardment launched on Kiev this morning, many explosion reports came from the capital. The president of Ukraine confirmed that the Russian army is approaching Kiev from the north and east. Yesterday, U.S. Secretary of Defense Lyot Austin reported that Russian troops advancing to Kiev by entering Ukraine via Belarus were 20 miles away. Tonight, the Ukrainian army reported that clashes took place 18 miles from Kiev. The president of Ukraine issued a statement a few hours ago saying that tonight will be a very difficult night. After the Russian army started ground operations, the Ukrainian armed forces began to give the necessary answer. Clashes continue in Kharkiv, Mariupol and Gostomel. After the clashes at the Gostomel airport, the Ukrainian armed forces recaptured the airport. At the same time, after the Russian occupation of Kharkiv and Mariupol, where the biggest conflicts of the region were experienced, it seems that a part of the region was once again in the hands of Ukraine, with the attacks of the Ukrainian armed forces. But hot conflicts still continue in the region. At the same time, the Ukrainian armed forces is trying to pull the Russian army to the center by leaving the cities in the east of the country completely. It seems that they are trying to squeeze the war into a much narrower area instead of fighting the Russian army on a wider area. There are also hot hours in the Komelnitsky district. It is reported that the Starokostyantinov air base of the Ukrainian armed forces is under heavy bombardment by Russia. Large explosions were also heard in the city of Mykolaiv at night. While reports on the explosions were published from different local sources, no precise information was shared about the target of the explosion. Features major clashes took place in the Chernihiv region. The SBU building in Chernihiv was targeted as a result of the bombardment of the Russian forces. The Ukrainian armed forces also destroyed 20 tanks and 15 armored vehicles belonging to the Russians in Chernihiv. This development fell like a bomb on the agenda and came to the fore as the harshest response of the Ukrainian armed forces. It is understood from the images that the building was burned in the explosion that occurred as a result of the attack on the SBU building in Chernihiv. As Russia attempted to occupy Kiev, a massive fire engulfed the SBU headquarters in Chern-IGIV, Ukraine, after two shells hit on Friday. A massive fire broke out after two bullets hit the SBU headquarters in Chern-IGIV, Ukraine, on Friday. The Security Service of Ukraine, SSU, is Ukraine's main government security agency in law enforcement and counterintelligence activities and in the fight against terrorism. According to the local newspaper Suspiln Chernihiv, the regional SBU building was set on fire. The fire engulfed the roof. Recall that two artillery shells hit it. The Ukrainian army is reporting significant clashes in the northwestern region of the capital, Kiev, as Russia tries to invade deeper. Russia's plan is to break through Chernihiv and Ivanki as far as Kiev with columns of tanks. The Ukrainian said that he destroyed about 20 Russian tanks in the direction of Mina in the Chern-IGIV region. In the statement made by the Land Forces Command, Northern Operations Command units destroyed about 20 enemy tanks in the direction of Mina in the Chernihiv region. The losses in manpower are being clarified. The Kremlin announced that President Vladimir Putin has agreed to send a delegation to meet with Kiev. However, as a result of the negotiations, no agreement was reached between the Zelensky government and the Putin government, and at the end of the negotiations, the president of Ukraine stated that this evening would be much tougher for Kiev. Earlier in the day, Russian Foreign Minister Sergei Lavrov said they would be willing to continue negotiations through diplomatic channels if the Ukrainian military agreed to lay down arms. Last December, we proposed to talk with Zelensky about the security guarantee. We want to have joint talks and joint efforts for a joint security guarantee. He is aware of the facts about Ukraine and should not blame Russia, said Lavrov. Well, when we briefly summarize what happened in Ukraine today, as dawn breaks in Kiev, the capital of Ukraine, air raid sirens are sounding in the capital. 
Ukrainian President Volodymyr Zelensky confirmed multiple reports of Russian missile strikes in a national speech early Friday morning. Violent explosions were heard in Kiev early Friday morning. A Guardian reporter in the city confirmed that they heard a loud explosion. Earlier, reports circulated that Russia had launched a series of missile attacks on the city of just under 3 million, while residents reported waking up to the sound of the explosion. Ukrainian President Volodymyr Zelensky made a national speech, confirming that 137 civilian and military personnel have been killed so far in Russia's invasion of his country. Zelensky added that although Russia describes itself as the number one target, his country was left alone to fight Russia and that he and his family remained in Ukraine. The Ukrainian president also declared a full 90-day military mobilization against the Russian occupation. According to U.S. officials, Russian forces were only a few kilometers from reaching Kiev. U.S. Defense Secretary Lloyd Austin told lawmakers that Russian mechanized forces entering Ukraine from Belarus about 20 miles, about 20 miles, from Kiev, the Associated Press reported, citing a familiar source, said in a phone call that took place around 6.30 p.m. Eastern Time on Thursday. He said it was 32 kilometers away. When news broke that Russian tanks were approaching the city from all directions, Many civilians sought safety in bomb shelters and subway stations. The White House press secretary, Jen Psaki, said the United States was ready to accept Ukrainian refugees fleeing Ukraine. Southeast of Kiev, two high-rise residential buildings were seen burning after debris from a downed plane reportedly hit them. A multi-story building is on fire in photos released by the Ukrainian State Emergency Department. Ukraine's interior ministry said it shot down a Russian plane over Kiev. Anton Jeroshenko, advisor to the Minister of Internal Affairs of Ukraine, said that the Russian plane was shot down by the Ukrainian Air Force and crashed in the Darnitsky district. The Ukrainian Border Guard Service said that the Ukrainian border post in the Zaporizhia region was hit by a missile attack at 4.25 a.m. local time. The Ukrainian armed forces confirmed that additional weapons were brought to Kiev amid news of the explosion in the Ukrainian capital. French President Emmanuel Macron said Russian President Vladimir Putin was being hypocritical in talks with him, discussing the details of the Minsk agreements on the phone as he prepared to invade Ukraine. The United Nations has announced that it has immediately allocated $20 million to scale up UN humanitarian operations in Ukraine following the Russian invasion. Ursula von der Leyen and Charles Michel from the EU announced the details of the second tranche of sanctions against Russia. A few hours ago, Australian Foreign Minister Maurice Payne said she had received advice from her department to expand the sanctions to include the Russian president, who will be personally responsible for the deaths and suffering of innocent Ukrainians. Payne said that imposing sanctions on a country's leader was an exceptional step, while Russia's invasion of Ukraine was an exceptional situation. Obviously, the only way to set a price for these actions is to make sure that he shares some of the cost and some of the pain he has caused everyone around him in Ukraine. Ukraine has asked Tim Cook, Apple's CEO, to remove Russia from the App Store and Apple products. The country's deputy prime minister and minister of digital transformation, Mikhailo Fedorov, published his letter Friday, urging Cook to strengthen the impact of government-level sanctions. The whole world repulses the aggressor by imposing sanctions, the enemy must suffer significant losses. But we need your support, in 2022 modern technology may be the best answer to tanks, multiple rocket launchers, HRAD, and missiles. I appeal to you, and I am sure that you will not only hear, but do everything possible to protect Ukraine Europe, and finally the whole democratic world from bloody authoritarian aggression including blocking to stop supplying Apple services and products to the Russian Federation. Access to the App Store. We are confident that such actions will motivate Russia's youth and active population to proactively stop shameful military aggression. The U.S. Treasury imposed sanctions on Vladimir Putin and Foreign Minister Sergei Lavrov. The United States, in coordination with its allies and partners, continued to respond vigorously to Russia's unjust, unwarranted and unintentional invasion of Ukraine, the ministry said in a statement. We are prepared, if necessary, to impose more costs on Russia for its appalling behavior on the world stage, said Treasury Secretary Janet Yellen.